early in 2014, we were left over from this um, loan with the last $3,000 of the loan. Mm -hmm. And we thought, okay, let's just do as much as we can to the shop. Let's build mm -hmm. the shop next. Um, and that I think we put into an oven. <laughs> Right. Right. That was a so, bit of a crime of passion. We're, yeah. And we'll talk about that. But now we're entering into phase four now, mm -hmm. which is um, finishing the shop, doing, building the shop and finishing it. Actually, it's not quite finished yet. Mm -hmm. But um, let's focus on the shop now. Because yeah. we've got the slaughter truck. It's kind of, yeah. it's working. It's good. It's, um, and let's do the shop now. And so we ran out of money from our original loan. We mm -hmm. had $3,000 left. We knew that was just going to um, go to maybe one little thing, which is that oven, which if you're on YouTube, you can see right behind me. Um, mm -hmm. And then we have no more money left. But we really need to keep going because now we have this truck that's bringing in carcasses at a rapid pace. Right. we got to process them somewhere. So what we did is in 2014, we applied for a grant. Summer set in that, that year, and we ran out of our loan money, mm -hmm. and we were paying it off. Um, but I thought, we, we need one more big influx of capital. Mm -hmm. So I was just looking around at grants, and they're really hard to find, too. Specifically, when you want to build a building, for some reason, there's, um, there's a lot of restrictions. They want you to put the money into something else besides an act, a physical building that's like, found mm -hmm. it to the ground. So um, anyway, it took some tricky searching, but I found one and I applied for it and we got it. Yeah. And I wrapped all of the work up into a little sentence there, but it was, yeah. it was a lot of work. I'll never do it again. <laughs> <laughs> I can say that, but I am glad I did it once. Like I said, it's like, we need more money. I'm going to become a grant writer. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to learn how to do the whole process. Yeah. Even though I'm only going to do it once, but but it, it paid off and it was a $25,000 grant. Mm -hmm. And we used that money to um, immediately, we just, we built, we wanted to build this thing as quickly as we could at that point. Yeah. Um, and so the money actually started coming in in 2015. Um, the first thing we did was we hired your uncle. So oh, that's like right. we've said, his dad is a contractor and his dad would hire his uncle, who's a craftsman, brother. right? And, Incredibly uh, skilled. He came up here for like three weeks. Yeah. And um, he built well. Drew. So going back to Drew, yeah. he was. So we met a guy on the island, and he, 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 he was the guy who you said um, was interested in all things ag agrarian. And he was also in the middle of transition. What you want to do is find <laughs> contractors who are done working for other guys and they're just starting their own business because they're looking for work and they're not charging a ton of money. Mm -hmm. They're really grateful to work for you and they're, they do great work. Mm -hmm. It's like artisanal work. And we, so we caught him right when he was in that transition period. Mm -hmm. um, he was kind of extricating himself from working for someone else for a bigger company and he was he, he knew he wanted to start his own mm -hmm. his own enterprise his own operation so so he helped get the walls framed framing. He did the framing right and then your uncle stepped in yeah right at the right time and he helped get all the exterior siding interior siding yeah drew sourced the paneling the interior paneling here which i never would have thought to use at all but he mm -hmm. happened to find like a good deal in a bulk what was left over from a bulk order or something. And he's just like, well, there's this. Right. So, okay. Can't yeah. really think about it, but yeah. <laughs> and, and it's perfect. Uh -huh. it's um, beautiful. And then he also sourced the tile that you see on our walls mm -hmm. here. Um, this blue and white tile, which was a dream of ours. The, Cause it's, the wood um, paneling in the back there. Yeah. And the tile, I cleaned every single tile on our walls <laughs> because it was, Reclaimed. It had grout on all of it and glue. It was a local glue was Vashon worse. bathroom remodel. Yeah. And a lady <laughs> salvaged all of it. No tile left behind, I think, is her <laughs> shtick. Uh, but we bought That's all right. this tile and I cleaned every single one. And there it is. My uncle put it up because he's very good at delicate, refined things like putting up tile, which uh -huh. is not easy. Mm -hmm. Very tricky. 
He did a beautiful job. He did a great job. Yeah. And it was the color that we wanted to. We mm-hmm. kind of always envisioned the Portuguese. Azuleju. Azuleju, which is so fun to say. <laughs> um, the blue. Azul, blue tile. Blue. Yeah. That look, for some reason, that was always our dream. So. Well, blue deters flies. Ah, yeah. So there's utility in Common knowledge. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so, yeah, the tile. Um, the insulation. And he did the insulation. The and windows. The, paneling. the windows and the siding around mm-hmm. the windows. Yeah. Yeah. So my uncle, because he's good at what he does, he could build the mm-hmm. window casement. Mm-hmm. And we got the windows used. You know, they're all blown glass because we're silly and... We like old looking things and we went to Seattle and picked up three windows. At a second use store. And so we had to mm-hmm. build the holes to fit the windows. So we can't ever break the window. Yeah. We'll have to look to our sons. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. And... We also let's talk about the oven real quick. Oh yeah. The oven story. That was Craigslist. Yeah, that was a three hundred dollar Craigslist purchase. Yes. And Twas a boat anchor. Yeah. So we were told by an actual oven repairman. So we weren't right. just making it up but we, after we bought it. Yeah. I, yeah. Uh, at the time, uh, we had Josh working with us. Mm-hmm. And we sent him on this errand to pick up this oven that we found on Craigslist. And the reason we chose it is because, well, it's cute. It's old. and yeah. But it's also really functional. It is a wood-burning oven and a propane oven, mm-hmm. which is perfect because we don't have natural gas. But we can do propane, and we didn't want electric. And uh, but I also wanted to be able to heat the shop with wood on account of the fact that we live in a forest, and so it's got two hot plates that are uh, wood burning, and then four propane burners. Mm-hmm. And it heats the the shop. It does. It does really so well, which is pretty essential when we have classes mm-hmm. and we have lots of chattering teeth in mm-hmm. here. It's good too. Yeah, it was heat a good the investment. The yeah. last thing that we should talk about about our wood about our shop is the showpiece butcher table here in the middle yeah (laughs) the big table we our shop is 400 square feet so it's teeny and i need to be able to put at least eight people in here for a class um but not just eight people standing around eight people cutting meat Mm -hmm. namely four sides so two people per side and that is a tricky thing to accommodate in one space. And um, Plus that, that would be out of the way of this trolley system. Exactly, because we need to be able to swing carcasses in mm-hmm. here. And, of course, we didn't think about any of that when we were building the shop. This was mm-hmm. all just mm-hmm. after the fact. And we kind of worked ourselves into the position where everything was in here except for the big central table. And I knew that I needed this table to accommodate eight people and four sides. And so we were worked into this tight spot, literally, where I needed a table to be seven by five. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It could not be any bigger yeah. or it would block the trolley. And it couldn't be any smaller or it wouldn't fit the people and the pig, the pork. Right. I went back to Craigslist for the table and we started searching. And in a, in a pretty, not, you know, really fancy uh, neighborhood in Seattle, really high end, there was this humongous kitchen island for sale. Yeah. And it had a hole in it where a sink was. And it was a kitchen island and it was seven by five. It was and it was edge inch. grain. It was perfect. Yeah. yeah. Edge grain maple. Mm-hmm. Untreated. And it even has the added benefit of having drawers beneath it. Yep. See? Show them. <laughs> Drawer. Yeah. <laughs> Which I did not count on. Mm-hmm. Um and so They wanted twenty two hundred for it. Yeah. Which it, it is worth every penny of yeah. that. It's a very nice piece. And at piece. the time I said, I only have 1800 Yeah. <laughs> and um, I told him a little bit about our business. And I should also mention, we, we did this with the oven, the homestead stoves guy. Right. And I told him about our business. So don't be shy in doing that either. Look, look what I'm trying to do and look how successful I've been so far. Yeah. So they don't think you're just a total, like you're just trying to mooch or something. Yeah. But... Um, Tell people about what you're trying to do. And they, like this lady, she said, I, she had other buyers from other states mm-hmm. for this piece. Yeah. And she 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 sold it to us yeah. because 
she just liked what we were going to do with it. Yeah. And um, she believed in it or, or whatever. You know, people like the story of where something really important that they've had is going. Yeah. So all that happened in 2015. We built the shop in pretty much a summer. Yeah. As far as we had, I mean, the roof was already here and the slab was already poured, but getting the walls up and getting everything sided and interiored and yeah. uh, plumbed and electrical and everything, that was basically, I mean, it was a summer and a fall. Hmm. I'll say because actually we, we kind of put a deadline on ourselves because we had classes already scheduled to use in this shop at the end in, in fall of 2015 and here we are in 2018 and it's still not completed mm-hmm. um, and there's been a few things that we've minor things that we've done some of the casing around the doors, you know, was not done. So we did that last year. Trim, yeah. We had this really ugly water heater <laughs> that heats the water for the shop. And that was exposed yeah. for like a year and a half. And it was the biggest eyesore you ever saw yeah. in our shop. So we, now it's hidden. We covered that. It's encased in a little, its own little water heater closet. And yeah. so little things like that to try to make it more comfortable in here. Um The thing that still needs to be done in here is um, staring at it right now. The um, Hmm. the 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 scale, the hanging scale, the trolley scale, right? And we have it; it just needs to be installed. Yeah. So there's some. uh... I've been using this little (laughs) thing. (laughs) Expletive. Yeah. Yeah, This is. It's just a hanging scale that you can. You know, hunters will use this Uh just to weigh their deer carcass. But basically, this is not the way to go in a butcher shop because you have to lift the carcass off the rail and then, you know, dexterously hook it onto the hanging scale that is also hanging on the rail, but a little lower. Mm -hmm. And it's, depending on the size of the carcass, that can be a a titanic feat of Mm -hmm. achievement. That can be really difficult. Physically and psychologically. (laughs) Yeah, and so I... The one thing we need is for a scale to be incorporated into the trolley system, which means you just roll the carcass and it suddenly it is on a scale. Yeah. And you get a weight and then you roll it off of the scale and put it in the walk end. So it's a roll instead of a lift. And um, we actually have the scale. It's part of that original trolley system that we purchased from the Tacoma Meat Shop. It's just sitting under the eave of my house and it weighs a lot. It's like, it is so heavy. It's so many metal parts. It's a 100% mechanical counterbalance scale, not mm-hmm. digital. And you slide the weights along the slide and you get uh, to see how much your carcass weighs. It's really cool. It's, it'll be beautiful. It's really when complex. It's, yeah. it's uh, going to be a beast. It'll to be install. hard to, yeah. We're going to have to build scaffolding to hold <laughs> it out. I don't, don't want to think about it. Mm-hmm.